a different uh, perspective. You have been learning uh, one point, two point, and three points. And now I'm going to show you uh, it's called isometric or axiometric perspective. And it's, uh, it's like a two point perspective, but without any vanishing points. Uh, it looks almost like certain computer games because everything is uh, follows straight lines. And uh, one advantage of it is that you can <coughs> prolong it how long you want. And if you want, you can cut up parts of it and move, it, move them around. And uh, for example, this is uh, I made by using this perspective, this drawing. And it's, I started by just making a grid uh, and then just taking forms and extruding them upwards. And you get a really good sense uh, of uh, uh, 3D, 3D sense to, to the drawing. So um, you first start by using uh, by drawing the grid. And uh, the best thing is to have a ruler, a uh, pretty long ruler. And uh, I don't have a ruler now, so I will make it freehand. something you're looking at uh, like you're in a, an airplane and looking down a little bit uh, uh, tilted like this so all those lines are parallel to each other and all those lines are parallel to, to each other um, and the angle doesn't matter yes the angle matters uh, <laughs> but you can do it I always do it uh, feel it when it's okay. But you make uh, it uh, more angled, you will be watching it more from a uh, from height. Okay. So by, by tilting it down, you're seeing it at an angle, and that will make the image a little bit more interesting. This time I will start with a, a, a view from upwards, if I see it from the upside. This is what I want to do. I want to have uh, a place for my car, like this. And beside the car I want some kind of uh, wind machine. And beside that I want some kind of pump. And with a pipe going like this. And I, here I have a barn full of dirty cows and a road that passes this uh, tube and I want some kind of system for cleaning the cows. And here I have my house that I live in and this pipe goes over a field where I have uh, vegetables and then it ends up in a swimming pool here. And I also have a system for uh, some kind of solar power. This is very easy to make this plan. And by uh, transforming this plan to the grid, we can make another grid over this one. And then use that as a template, transforming it into the uh, tilted grid. So we'll draw. I will have my car, I will have my solar power here, my uh, well to the water, and the pipe goes like this. So this is a projection on the ground. And here I will have my barn full of dirty cows, and here is my living, living house. And there is always parallel when I draw lines like this, they always follow those lines. 
And this is a field with vegetables. And this is a swimming pool. And also I have this system for solar power here. And then I just start by extruding all those shapes. So for example, I can start with the, the pump. Yeah. The black pump instead. I see. So those shapes are exactly the same. I just make it two. And here I will have my road where the cows will be walking. So the pipe will go upwards and down again. And with the house, I also start with the lines from the bottom, and then I just extrude upwards. And I have a parallel lines, so they're always parallel. In order to get a thatch roof, I'm just take in the middle, on the side, make a line upwards, and I can either measure it. Same difference, and then just make the roof like this. Just adding windows, it's always lines going upwards, or they're always parallel to one of the three lines, either to the ground here, or in the upward direction. It's always nice if you can get the pre. Uh, it looks very flat, you just use uh, uh, the plane, it, but in order to uh, get depth to it, you can um, make this door go a little bit inside. You also use the parallel, the lines as parallel, uh, to get that feeling. Same with the video, if you want it to go inwards. And then you can uh, erase the lines that uh, obstruct, are obstructed by the roof, for example. And then I <coughs> make the barn here, it's the same thing, screwed upwards. And a door. And then I want the solar power system here, I just screwed it upwards. Add a propeller. The same with the car, it's just take this as, <coughs> as the, the bottom of the car and then just try to follow the lines. <laughs> and then perhaps add some cows. Uh, I walk around here. And here they pass the system for making them clean and make some whole water. Continue with the pipe. And this is a field with vegetables. So it's a way of, um, and here's the kind of solar plants. So see, it's a way of transforming uh, something you see from upwards to a nice 3D approximation of, uh, uh, of that plane. It's very fast and it's, as it uh, follows those lines all the time, it's easy to just continue drawing in this vein because everything will follow the scale like this. And when I uh, add characters to drawings like this, I always take a little bit of paper and then I draw a little person, some kind of right scale. <coughs> and I have that as a template, uh, adding life to the drawing. <coughs> the same with the swimming pool. In order to really get the sense that it's a swimming pool, you can explode it downwards too. 
get a feeling that it's a hole in the ground. Do you understand? Yeah, okay. Any questions? It's a uh, it's very it's like almost like uh, building with Lego, so um, or some kind of uh, small pieces you can stick together. And in order, in the way you draw uh, the grid, you can get different feelings to it. And I here I try to make everything a little more uh, giving things depth. For example, if you really try to think how houses look. I always want to make a house here in Amsterdam. Make them with a little width, make them more believable. So it's a very useful technique and it's good to be as thorough as possible when drawing the, the grid. Use a ruler, it's good to have a, a see-through ruler with the, perhaps some lines in it so you can s just move the ruler and know that uh, they follow uh, the, the other lines. Otherwise you will lose the perspective uh, pretty easily. And that's, uh, uh, it's also, um, you have to think that you see uh, stuff from a little bit on top. And uh, it's also easy, uh, good to try as much as possible to make uh, the shapes a little more simple. If you're going to uh, draw a tree, don't make uh, the branches, just make, how would you see when you're flying from uh, an airplane? That's just more like an trees and the trunk comes afterwards and that's also very nice to have the shadows beneath stuff so you really feel that they are they touching the ground so it's a simple technique but it's a really fast way of uh, getting ideas uh, easy to explain and you can also try to uh, try different versions and removing different parts. Uh, what would happen if I do it like this instead? So it's a really good technique. Yes. And uh, it's very uh, important to, uh, when doing stuff like this, to add uh, characters to it. Because uh, the character is the way we first see the scale of things. It's really helpful to see. All, uh, all different characters working in the, the milieu. And not just, uh, it's easy to make characters very stiff. You draw them standing right, right up. Try to watch uh, television or uh, in magazines how people stand. Because just by uh, making small adjustments to the feet, you get more a sense of the volume of characters. And also, by drawing the shadows, it's also a way of showing the volume of, uh, of, of characters. So t pay attention to how they look and pay attention how they interact to each other. It's also make the image more believable. If you're uh, making, uh, um, you can show the functions of the different part of the drawing by having characters uh, doing stuff. For example, here you can see uh, the character uh, working on the field. Uh, so in order, that makes it easier to, to explain what's happening in the image. We can add some kids in the water. And the character can be pretty simple. They don't have to be exactly like human beings, but just believable characters will make uh, will help uh, the ideas shine through much more uh, than if you don't have the characters with the image. Okay. Any questions? Yes. So, uh, do you always have like, the same size of things? Or, well, 
goes behind gets... No. Uh, yeah. In this case, everything will have the same size. So there's no uh, point where, uh, where everything disappears. I can then move this house and it will be exactly as large here. So it's like you're uh, in an airplane and looking at something really, really far up. And then you will not see that difference between uh, deep things. That's, that's the thing that makes it really, really simple when you understand how you do it. Yeah, 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 exactly. It also works uh, making interiors. <coughs> then you only have to, uh, to remove uh, uh, some walls. And it's a great system if you made, for example, this uh, drawing uh, from the outside. Then you can just use the same grid. Uh, if I take this house, and it has this size. I can make an interior part of that house. Yeah. And I can... Uh, make a version but I remove all the walls and make the interiors visible so you can make this image in different versions and they won't be possible to put on top of each other and can remove different parts so it's a, a you make some kind of a, a image sequence you can almost easily make this into an animation so easy to remove different parts yeah, I think that's that technique. Uh, if you want to try it uh, and you have questions, you can come directly to me, and uh, I can help you get started with the, the grid. And it's it's a good thing to try it directly and uh, see if it suits you. And you can just uh, start by making a simple house and uh, see if it works, and then see something you can use. Most of the uh, cases this is more usable I think than using three point perspective or two point perspective because uh, you tend to have problem with the vanishing points if you, uh, for example uh, going to draw a house in with two point perspective it's, it's very hard to um, really get a sense of uh, what's happening and it's hard to add stuff afterwards because you will have a distortion on the side of this house. So this is a great way of adding. You can add more houses and see how it works. But this is more fixed from just one point of view. It's the same thing. First, you can just draw it uh, yeah. up. Now you will notice that, for example, a round shape, it will uh, touch. You just have to try to. Okay. You can always try to make it uh, a round object, so, mm -hmm. and then look at it uh, at an angle. That's the same thing that happens. And in order to, do, to draw the shape, you just extrude it, and this form will be the same here. Mm -hmm. It's also if you have, for example, a, a river floating here, you can draw it, draw the form of it, <coughs> and then just follow. So it works with the, it works best with the, when extruding things, it looks best with the, the square things, but you can add the flowing things as well.